All right, guys, so in today's video, we'll be reacting to a video that talks about five pieces of money advice you should never listen to. And the YouTube channel that we'll be reacting to today is called The Financial Diet. Now, there's no surprise that a lot of people get bad money advice, right? And some of this bad advice can set your financial journey back years if you're not careful. So always make sure you're, you're doing your research on who you're taking advice from and make sure that it's a credible source, right? But yeah, let's get into the video and let's see if we agree with these five pieces of money advice you should never listen to. Hi, I'm Broke Millennial for The Financial Diet. Welcome to the three minute guide brought to you by Skillshare. Today we're going to look at five pieces of money advice that you should just ignore. Number one, carry a balance on your credit card to improve your credit score. It could take me the whole three minutes to explain yeah, where this myth actually comes that. from, but what is important for you to know is that it is 100%- Unless you're carrying the balance for like a month, right? And then you pay it off at the end of the month. Or two, if you got like a, a promotional rate for like zero interest for the year, then yeah, obviously you can keep that balance. But other than that, uh, you should not keep it more than a month. There is never a need to carry a balance on your credit card from month to month by not paying off right. your balance in full. The best practice for both your wallet and a healthy credit score is to just pay your credit card bill on time and in full. Number two, that's renting true. is a waste of money. Ultimately, you have to do the math. Maybe you live in an area where it's reasonable and affordable to buy a home and property taxes are low and it's not a fixer upper. So it doesn't make sense to give your money to a landlord. But if you live in a high cost of living area and home ownership seems completely unattainable, at least in the short term, then it's okay to be a renter. Right, Plus, exactly. Some people People always say buy a home and things like that, but I actually, I rent, I, I've always rented. And I think it's, if you don't have the money to put a down payment, I think renting is a good way to go. Cause you're gonna, you, you could use that money for a business, for some other type of investment. It doesn't always need to be a house. So I agree with that. You don't always need to own a home. Uh, that. That doesn't make sense to me. They can use the flexibility of not being a homeowner in the start of their careers when they're just really not sure where they could end exactly. up in the next year or two. Don't know the where next you're three are more up, so money philosophies of which you should be wary. Number three, the universe or God will provide. I am not gunning for anyone's spiritual or religious this beliefs. Is so true. There's certainly I, I nothing with wrong this. with this charitable like, giving. And, I'm and I, you see this a lot with people that are really religious. They try to pray away their problems. And I'm a person that prays. I, I pray every day, but. I know you have to put the work in, right? It's not just good enough to pray and think everything's gonna get solved. Uh, you have to put the work in and there's no shortcuts. So this is a good one. I see this one all the time. With saying people, be wary of gurus promising you can manifest money just by focusing on the laws of attraction or religious organizations right. telling you that God will endow you with wealth if you just give a hefty donation today. For one, it takes the control and empowerment right. completely gonna, away from you to create wealth good, for right? yourself but it's because not the universe you will bestow it. To, and two, it puts all the burden on you goals. if you fail to attract money correctly. It's great to be a positive thinker and have specific goals you want to achieve but it's also important Prayer's that you great, put in the sweat equity to make them happen number four treat yourself i know as a parks and rec oh. fan myself it pains me to say this but treat yourself is terrible money advice i kind of disagree with this one a little bit i think if you're hitting good milestones definitely treat yourself right uh, you don't want to just keep working and keep working and not treat yourself. Now, again, you don't want to be treating yourself every day or every week, but if you hit a good milestone, why not treat yourself, right? Um, obviously, don't go overboard where you're going to put yourself in a bad financial position, but yeah, I don't believe that you shouldn't treat yourself. Uh, just don't do it all the time. For moments you can splurge, preferably when you've saved up to do so, but not at the risk of your financial situation. There are too right, many I, times, I never and I'm looking at you, wedding industry, that we invoke this idea treat of treat yourself or you deserve it in order to overspend and even incur debt. Number five, you are your best investment. This is a controversial take, but adages uh, like you are your best investment and if you do a job you love, you'll never work a day in your life. I love my job, but damn some days it's a grind and I just want to unplug. The right. reason you are your best investment can be bad advice because at some point you can overinvest. You can put yourself deep. Yeah, and I, you see this a lot with people that do the motivational stuff, do the self-help books. You can only buy so many self-help books, right, uh, for yourself. You, you, at some point, you just need to go out and do the work. So I do agree with this one to a point, but you do need to invest in yourself uh, so you can get the tools that you need to, to meet your financial goals and things like that. Uh, but don't overdo it, right? Where you're just 
just looking for motivation, self-help stuff, but you don't actually get anything done. So yeah, this one's like 50-50 for me. Or a business idea that just may never pay off. We hear so many stories of entrepreneurs who are this close to giving up and then bam, success happened. Which makes us not want to abandon our projects for fear that we're right on the cusp of success. So while you should believe in yourself and you should invest in yourself, you should also set up parameters and have people who can hold you accountable. One of the strategic ways to invest that in is yourself true. is All right, so you can improve- a good video. Yeah, so I agree with most of the stuff on this list. Like I said, uh, to be honest, all this stuff on the list could be true, but you know, if, if you tweak it a little bit, I probably agree or disagree with with some of the points. But for the most part, I agree with the whole list. Everything is good in moderation. So, for instance, the first one on the list, or I think it was the second one, don't hold a credit card balance over a month. This makes sense, right? If you're going to accrue interest, why would you hold that over a month? Unless you just can't pay for it, but why are you in that predicament in the first place? But yeah, go subscribe to The Financial Diet. This was a good video. I'm gonna check out her other content. And yeah, if you guys like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.